Hi, I'm here with Vicky Pauly. Uh, now, your job title is so long, I can't possibly yeah. go for it. Could you just introduce yourself? Yes, I am Vicky. I am the Community Engagement and Inclusion Officer for Dover Athletic Football Club and the Community Trust. That's quite a title, yes, isn't it? it? Is. You're a lady with many hats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have got many hats. Um, and sometimes I don't know where they all are at one go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in this the Crabble Sensory Room, which also uh, doubles up as your office. Yep. Uh, just tell us a little bit about this room. So, um, shortly after I started my, my job here, um, I was approached by uh, Pat Verrill. I'm sure many people know him. Um, he works quite closely with, I think he's the chairman of the Autistic Society for the local area, um, saying that was there a way we could have some sort of sensory room within the ground um, for children with additional needs, autism, as a breakout space. Um, we had a conversation and I was like, how about my office? It's big enough. So spoke to Jim about it. He had no problem with it at all. So. In the week, it is my office, and on a match day, it is the sensory room that's accessible to anybody that needs needs to come in and use it. Yeah, and it's got yeah. all manner of things here, isn't it? Yes, I think it this, is, this, is, this is a, well, the children's eyes will light up walking yeah. in here. Just tell us a little <laughs> bit about what's in here. So we've got, uh, obviously, soft play mats, so if you need to sort of just lay on the floor, roll around, different soft play um, shapes, which they were donated me to by a lady from uh, BBC Radio Kent, actually. She, she got in contact and said, do you, do you want some stuff? And then there's just different sensory items, so different texture cushions, blankets, the curtains are so they can hide behind them if they want to, and then there's all different toys. The idea is is that it's, it's a, it can be a calming room, so if someone just needs that time to have a calm down before they can go back out and watch the football, then, then that's what this space is for. Yeah, it looks very nice. And actually, this used to be uh, the change rooms. This block, of course, was the change room. Just as, was this the home, home dressing, dressing room? Dressing yeah. room? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, boy, so when I first started, Jim did say, did I want all the benches taken out? And I was like, no, no, leave them. I'm sure they'll come in use at some point. And they have. So, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite nice to still have it as you can see that it was an old dressing room, um, but how it's been reused for, for the needs that it is now. Give us a sort of a, a rundown of what you actually do in terms of your job. Okay, so um, there's a lot, of, a lot of different elements to my job. When I was first offered the job role, uh, my job is funded by Mega, who have been great with this role, great in supporting me. So I have some job descriptions from them and then the rest of it is club based so some of the some of the objectives let's say that they gave me were they just wanted to do more in the community have a they want a sense of being in the community and thought a great way to do it would be with the football club um so one of one of those one of those is the the involvement of women in the girls game and girls playing football so maybe that's something we can come on to and talk about in a little while um so there's that side of it and then also there is the stuff within the football club the match day experiences stuff that the football club can be doing in the community and uh, yeah there was lots of different bits and bobs to my job yeah how did you get involved in it because of course you were doing it voluntarily to start off with obviously you're yeah. you're almost a lifelong dover <laughs> fan aren't you and uh, and and you you ended up getting roped in doing some volunteering and, and then you ended up getting the job for uh, you know full-time just explain how that happened so yeah so like you say i've, I've been with the club for, for many many years um however many years ago I can't remember I, I started helping Debs and Paul on a Saturday morning with with the happy feet sessions that were going up on on, on the back training pitch um, and between the three of us we were doing a small community role voluntarily uh, the trust was formed the community trust the charity was formed in 2018 and I was one of the original trustees when that was set up um, I did step away for a little bit because trying to do it all voluntarily and work full time, it, it got a little bit too much. But then, yeah, uh, probably a couple of years ago, Jim approached me, Mega had come in, they were keen to have a community engagement through the football club. Um, and yeah, and it kind of went from there, really. We had a, a talk about it. I... I said no to begin with. I was like, no, no, you're all right. No, no, I'm happy where I am. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Um, and then I think he, I think the seed had been planted and I sort of sat where I thought about it and thought, well, okay, what's the worst that can happen? So yeah, I, I caved in eventually and here I am. And so. here you are, you still survived, <laughs> yeah. you're still in one piece. Yeah. <laughs> Just about. Yeah. So let's talk about a few of the things. I mean, uh, there's a lot going on at the moment. Just talk, mm -hmm. talk quickly through what's going on at the moment. What are the big things that you're doing? Um, 
the projects that we've got going that are, well, are up and running and stuff, probably our longest projects, like I say, the Happy Feet Children's Football. So that's recreational football on a Saturday morning for ages 5 to 16. They, they run all throughout the year, weather permitting. We've had the walking football, that's been running probably for about five, six years now. So that, that's on a Sunday morning. So there are long standing projects. We want to keep them going for as long as possible. Uh, back in March, we started a girls only football session that runs alongside the Happy Feet sessions. And initially we went for the 11 to 16 year old age group. I'd approached the Kent FA, uh, there's funding for that from the main FA, it's called, they, they call it squad. So we went down that route first. Um, that came off the back of, I did some work with, uh, there's a local social enterprise group called Future Foundry. They do a lot in the town. They'd come to me, they'd surveyed all the children in secondary schools. And the biggest thing that came out that the girls in the town wanted was the opportunity to play football. So they'd come to me with that and it was that age group. So that's why we, went down that route. So I did some pop-up football sessions with them as part of what they do. I'm going to be doing some more with them in October. So that's what led into going down that girls route on a, on a Saturday morning. What's come from that is we then had so many girls, we've now set up the under 15 girls side who have started this season. We were then getting inquiry after inquiry about younger age groups. So March was the start of the squad, which was the older girl, girls. And we launched what's called Wildcats, which is another FA initiative that launched beginning of September. And that's now starting to grow. So we're now starting to get bigger numbers of girls coming through that we're already looking at how many teams we actually might need to provide for next season. So what sort of numbers good. are we talking? Um, we are talking that we've got enough at the moment to... So with the under-15 girls we've got at the moment, they play in two-year age groups. So... We've got some older girls at the sessions on a Saturday morning that would be ready to play football from next season. So we could probably split that team next year to an under 16s and an under 15s. But we've also got a nice little group at the moment that are just building up. We may have a, an under 12s and an under 13s next season, depending. Well, we're just, we're seeing what we've got. We're going slowly. We don't, I don't like to rush into anything. No. <laughs> I like to make sure everything is going to work. And it's not just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll try that. And then it, it all falls apart in a few weeks. So hopefully that's why we're starting now to look ready for next season. Yeah. And you must be so happy because, of course, you used to play for the Dover ladies yourself. Yes, and, of course, the way that the, the female game anyway has mm, grown yeah. uh, nationally, obviously, yeah. the, the England Lionesses and all that, they're, they're, they're inspiring a, a new generation of, of girls to play football. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played football for probably nearly 20 years because I am <laughs> that old. Um, but, yeah, no, it was, it was sad to hear that actually there were girls in the town that were having to travel so far away out of the town to play football. And I think when I was playing football, we had at least four ladies, ladies teams yeah. playing in the town. I mean, mm. the Dover ladies itself had a first team and a reserve team and there were two other teams. Um, why that's fallen apart or hasn't been as, I don't know, carried on for, for those years, I'm not quite sure. It's probably many, many reasons. So to actually now give girls an opportunity to do that is, is really quite satisfying because... It seems like everyone's trying everywhere, but I don't know. Everyone keeps hitting the same stumbling blocks. Just explain, yeah. you know, what the stumbling blocks are. Well, probably one of the biggest thing is playing facilities. There is a real shortage of it in this area, not just for girls football, for, for all football, and actually probably all sports. Um, I hear probably two or three times a week from different people I speak to about frustrations about not being able to get a pitch to play on, whether that's from our club, whether that's Dover Rangers whether that's Sunday league football, like, and we have a number of children that come through Happy Feet. And like I say, that's recreational football. And the idea is to get them, just to give them that confidence in football. We've got probably got a handful of kids on the Saturday morning that we know need to be playing in teams. We can't find them a team because the teams that are already running are already oversubscribed mm. and they've got no extra pitches to play on. So yeah, it's, it's something that I'm trying to work with other clubs, other uh, funders, the council, the town council, to see if there is a way we can all together find alternatives to the playing the playing surface situation because there is a lack of facilities in the town. 
Yeah, because of course the funding can either come from, I suppose, the FA, the Kent FA, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the local council. Mm -hmm. But of course, a lot of the donations that you get, because yep. you are a charity, yes. actually come from private companies, yes. don't they? So there, there are funding pots everywhere. Um, as you can imagine, they all come with different stipulations, what you can do, what you need to do it for, and what you can spend, what you can't, how much you can have. So I have to be very careful what I apply for and where, because if I apply for all of the same ones for the same thing and I get given them all and I've then got approved to all of them, I've spent the same money in the same way there, <laughs> someone's going to kick up at some point. So yeah, 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 it is trying to work that balance between where I can get funding from and where I can't, mm. what I can use it towards and what I can't. Now just explain, if you get the funding and the facilities, how, how many more girls do you think could actually take up the I, game? And I, get I think yeah, it could be a huge intake if I'm honest, and it's not just the girls, it's, it's and boys as well. Yeah. I think sport in general in this town, the uptake would be massive. I think there's a lack of opportunities. And for the facilities that are available, especially the private hire ones, they're quite overpriced for what they are. We are in a cost of living crisis. Mm. We are in an area of, and I will say because I have to put these stats in for my firm, we are in an area of social deprivation. You go to hire a, a, pit, a playing pitch or a playing surface as a team and you then have to say to your parents, oh, but it's going to cost you five, six pounds to come and train. N not everyone's got that. Not, not everyone's got that disposable income to do that. So having extra facilities that won't cost the earth is going to benefit everyone in the long term. There's so, there's so many different knock-on effects to sport in general. It covers the, the social aspect, the mental health aspect, the health. There's so many. I could talk about it for hours, but you probably don't <laughs> want to listen to me do that. But yeah, that, that is probably one of my biggest challenges and something that I am constantly sort of picking away at mm. to try and make a difference, I think. Because this is something you're very passionate about, isn't yeah. it? I mean, obviously, you grew up in the town yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. And... Coming into this job, um, I previously worked in a primary school in quite a deprived area. And you see it, you see it firsthand that when children miss out on opportunities early in life, they then don't quite often don't pick up those opportunities later in life. And it, it can change a lifestyle from early on. So yeah, I think, I think sport is such a good way for any child for, for so many different reasons. So that's why, quite a lot of my job sometimes won't always revolve around football. I know I'm associated with the football club. I'd love to see if us having an artificial surface where kids were having a go at cricket or hockey or all the sports that, again, they don't get to have a go at because there's nothing locally easy to get to because we have to remember as well that cost of living crisis doesn't just affect whether you can go and play a sport it's the getting to the sport it's having the equipment for the sport and I think yeah I, I would like to see the trust grow bigger and the football club provision grow bigger outside of just football so of course we've got an under 15s girls side and I know the ambition is to have a women's team uh, just tell us how the under 15s are getting on and, and how we're getting on in getting a women's team out on yeah. the pitch so as I said before obviously the, there was the women and girls involvement that that Mega really were keen to see um, it, it happened to fall nicely that that under 15 side were what we created first. Um, we will be looking to, we would like a women's team in the future. Mega would love to see a women's team associated with Dover Athletic Football Club, as would I. Um, but again, like I say, you can't rush into these things because there's all the elements involved to put these together. So we will start looking at, there are other, so where I said before there was Wildcats and Squad and their different age groups, there is a one more pot from the FA that I haven't tapped into yet that's called Just Play and that is recreational football for females, um, the adult females. So then you you can tap into that with the outcome of maybe they want to go competitive. So yeah, that's something I'm going to be looking at over the next few months of how we can get that going because obviously, again, back to facilities, I'm stuck for space. I've got, the, the, my, I've got my community training pitch that I'm already using all of Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Um, it's when you when you put that in. It, it's trying to find the right places to do to do those. Um, 
if we can't get a ladies team in the next, let's say, one to two seasons, potentially our under 15s in two, three seasons are going to become the ladies team. So although, yeah, we've got a kind of, we go, oh, it's not yet, but we know it's potentially there in, in a few years time if we're patient and we grow, we build it um, and we make it the best it can be. Let's talk about some of the other things that are going on. Yeah. I mean, obviously, happy feet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a bit ignorant about happy feet, so just tell us what happy feet is and, and what's it's involved. Essentially, it's just a turn up and play session. So, um, yeah, any any child can come on a Saturday. Um, nine till ten is the, the younger age group, and then quarter past ten till quarter past eleven for the older age group. I've got um, FA qualified coaches that, that run the sessions. They're, they're mainly fun. It's skill based with a game at the end. Uh, we find it's really good for children to come who have never really played football they want to play football they like the idea of playing football they're not quite sure so yeah they tend to come to us and what's quite nice is that we can then signpost to other grass once once they go i'm ready to play for a team now. i want to go and find a team I want to play football so yeah we we have conversations with uh dover rangers whitfield juniors and go we've got these children when are your like trial days and things like that um some of the children, they then, we don't see them all season because they go and play and then they come back to us when the season's <laughs> finished and when then come September again, they've gone again. And that's absolutely fine. We don't mind. It's a no commitment. You come as and when you want to. Um, yeah, at the moment we're seeing probably about 30 children on the first session. Uh, second session is probably about 10 or 10 to 15, depending on depending on what the weather's like and whether the older session is the older children, they tend to bring themselves. So it does depend on whether they've got themselves out of bed in the morning. So, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 of course, um, you have walking football, yes. which is brilliant for people who haven't played the game for many years or have just retired from full throttle football and just want to get involved. Just yeah. talk us about that. Yeah. So, again, this is a recreational session. So we started when we first started it. I can't remember how many moons ago. Um, yeah, we had such an age, uh, such a range sorry, of um, abilities. Um, and then walking football took off of its own kind of the back of everyone was sort of getting into it so there are actually competitive leagues so we did lose a number of guys they went over um, there's local clubs in the area who they play in competitive leagues but we had a group of guys that didn't want that they just wanted to turn up on a Sunday morning have a kick about with some people have a chat and a cup of tea and a biscuit afterwards and without that some of them went to try and they said it was just too competitive so we thought, no, we'll keep it as it is. We'll keep that recreational side. And we have had over the years such a range of people for, and different reasons. So we've had people who have been referred to us by the NHS who need to lose weight for their own health benefits. We've had people who have had an injury and haven't done any sport for ages, but want have got people who need a social outlook because they don't maybe don't see anyone else all week. Um, and... Yeah, so there's lots of different elements to it. It's great fun. The banter's hilarious. Um, I actually had to join in yesterday because I ended up running the session and then there was an odd number. Uh, I won't lie, I hurt today. I forgot <laughs> how... St well, actually, I hadn't given it credit as how strenuous walking football actually is. So when, when you go say walking football, you think, oh, that's easy. No, it's not. Give it a go and then tell me that it's easy. <laughs> Does it get quite competitive? <laughs> oh, it did get quite competitive yesterday. And I have to admit, I got a little bit competitive as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, of course, you also have your match day duties. Mm -hmm. There's a lot involved in that. Just explain what that entails yeah so we, we've taken to inviting or well, i say inviting club the clubs come to me so like i said mentioned before like dover rangers whitfield juniors got even bets hanger come over they contact me and say oh can we do a match day tour flag wear so i throughout the season i've got an ongoing list of people who are contacting going can we come and do this can we come and do that so yeah we we invite them over as a team with two of their like, two of their coaches uh, we take the children and the coaches, we take them for a tour. They go and see all inside the dressing rooms. They go and meet all the players. They have their photos taken. Uh, we make quite a big big deal of, out, out of it. Um, they absolutely love going in the dressing rooms um, and meeting the players. I think it's quite... It's, it's nice for them. It's also, I think, nice for the players as well because sometimes I think they don't realise that actually you are an idol to these children. Um, and, yeah... It's quite a nice, if, if you ever get the opportunity to come and see that in action, it's quite nice to watch from yeah. from what's going on. 
uh, yeah, so then we sort of do a, a mock walk out up onto the pitch and we sit in, they sit in the dugouts and we go over the other side and do all that tour. Um, and then just before kickoff, they're the ones with, with the big flags, fla- uh, waving, waving the, uh, the players out. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's something that we offer free as a football club um, for those children to come and do that. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that. I mean, sometimes on a match day, I might be running a raffle or um, doing other stuff. So, yeah, so where we've done uh, two raffles now I've done with the supporters club, we've worked with the community trust, we've run, we did one last Christmas, we did one at the beginning of the season. Um, so, yeah, working quite closely with the supporters club and they we help each other out where we can um, to try and raise the profile of the club and to do stuff within the community. So, yeah, it's... And it's how, how are the players finding it, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the little ones? Um, I think I think they were a bit daunting the first time I just went hi guys we've got so and so today uh, here they come I'm just literally just launch 10 children at them and go get on with it I mean because <laughs> I'm mean um but yeah um yeah they, they are good the players are really good and you know they are always willing to talk to the children and it's, it's just such a nice experience yeah no, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And of course, we've got the community day coming up against yes. hashtag united on mm. October the 19th. Yes. Um, so what's involved there? Um, hopefully a bumper crowd. Hopefully, um, yes. Explain how So we've given it, well, we, we've got a thousand tickets. So they're adult and child tickets. Um, Cactus Graphics kindly printed all of those for us. Um, so I have contacted all the schools in the Dover and Deal district, offering them their tickets. Um, not everyone has come back to me yet <laughs> saying they would like their tickets. So yeah, so they go out initially to schools. Um, and then if I've got any left, I offer them to other other groups in the area. So it might be the Scouts group or it might be um, another another sports team who might not have something on the day. So the, the idea is, is to give a game for free to an adult and a child that may not necessarily normally come up for whatever reason. That could be because they can't afford to come up all the time. But we hope from that that they might then say maybe once a month they will try and come up to a game. Um, the children, all the children will get goodie bags. I'm in the process of making a thousand of those at the moment. That's that's, that's always <laughs> lucky <nice>. you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what we, so um, I've got face painting booked in. I'm not sure where that's going to be yet. I need to. I haven't quite done my plan of what's going where. Um, I believe the chairman has sorted out some music for before the game. Um, and then I've got a couple of other a couple of other people I need to get hold of yet. So I don't really want to say these people might be coming because I haven't haven't finalised a few other things. But yeah, for for now, hopefully we'll have a bumper crowd. Yeah. Definitely will be goodie bags. Definitely will be face painting. Definitely will be some music and hopefully a win. So that would be that nice. Would that be would be nice. nice. Yes. That would be nice. So. And and of course um, you have got the community engagement day as well. And you do lots of mm. things, don't you? You you have you know you go to the regattas. You have stalls at various events. Mm. Just explain all those yeah, things. Yeah. So obviously there's lots of things that go in the community all the time. So like a couple of weekends, I think it might have been last weekend. There was Whitfield Village Fate, and there was the um, the Urban Fate down at Penses. So like, when I can get to things, I will go to things different. Um, areas in the town have their own community engagement days um, and it's nice to go to because it gets the club out there but it also gives me an opportunity to see who else is out there because there are actually a lot of smaller charities that are all we're all trying to do similar things just in different ways and it it can give you an idea of how to do something better but it also gives you an idea of who you can work with to help each other so yeah, so they are. That sometimes people might see me and they go, "Why is she here? Why is she not at the football club doing doing such stuff?" But it's it's quite nice to be able to work with different community groups because that's how you're going to get better at, at as a putting yourself in the community as a football club. We must speak about the sponsors, Mega, of course, because yes. they fund all this. Mm. Um, they've been absolutely massive they for have. this club, haven't they? Mm. Um, and they really do get involved as well, don't they? They they, yeah. they do get involved. They're not just here's the money and no, uh, no, go go do. and sort it out. Yeah, I'm I'm sure Jeremy um, loves it when he sees an email from me. Um, <laughs> I do I do like to obviously keep them in the loop of what's going on, what's going on. Jeremy is kind of he's on, on the um, community trust as a trustee as well. So yeah, and they are very keen for this role to make make an impact within within the community. They really want to see be seen to be doing something for the town of Dover. So, uh, uh, yes, Dover as a town even. Um, 
Um, on uh, that's why obviously I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z outside of the football club as well because it it's can't always be about football. Yeah, no, abs absolutely. And are you enjoying the job? I mean, you've been doing it a while, a little while now. Uh, is it fun? It depends on what day of the week you ask me. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I do enjoy the job. I enjoy seeing the projects when they come to life. I mean, there'll be times when you'll probably see me running around going, "Leave me alone," <laughs> but that's just because there's sometimes so many lots of different things going on and nothing sort of finishing and coming together that, that I sometimes get a little bit frustrated a little bit stressed out because mm. I know where we need to end up but we can't quite get where we're going uh, but yeah I, I do enjoy it it's it's challenging it's very different to what I was doing before um, yeah it's... and you talked about you know mega want to make an impact mm. Do you feel that's happening? And just give us an example of something that you've seen that's really satisfying for you on a personal level. Yeah, we really have made a difference there. Yeah, I, I, I think Mega are pleased with what I mean. I say I, I mean I, I'm in conversation with Jeremy quite regularly, um, and he's always thankful for what I'm doing. And oh, if you need anything, let me know, and we'll see what we could do with that. I think probably on the from a football club point of view, I think the match. The, the the atmosphere now. I know there's a lot of elements to that mm. this season. I think I'm I'm hoping that the impact that we're I'm not me personally, the community trust or the community side of stuff that that's having on a match day for everyone's match day experience. I think I hope that that is something that is coming across now. Um, it's nice to see happy people <laughs> 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 um, and people actually enjoying themselves on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I think probably outside of the football club. I think it is possible. I don't want to keep that all about the girls' football, but that's actually the impact that that's having because I'm mm. having lots of conversations with lots of different people about how how that is uh, impacting out, outside of the football club as such. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, um, and that I'm now having, like I said, other community groups going. Oh, we'd really like to get involved with that. How can we? How can we get involved with that? And I think, yeah, I think. Possibly for a while, when I when I first started, it was there was a lot of I'd say trust issues from people outside, mm, mm. <laughs> um, where they were like, "Oh, the football club want to do something. What? Why? Why?" <laughs> Whereas now, I think they see that actually it's because we're trying to do stuff in the community that actually people are more willing to work with you or maybe or accepting that actually that we don't want anything we 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 just want to give um so actually yeah i'd say maybe from an outside that is probably the biggest thing i think i'm noticing is that mm. when i approach different groups and organizations now i it's an easier conversation than it was 12 months ago yeah well we're living in 2024 we're not living in the past yeah. anymore and, yeah. and I, I you know i've just been to a few games this season already myself and i'm noticing a massive uplift mm. in terms of the morale and yeah. the, there's a real positivity at the club and and as i say the work you're doing i think is absolutely fantastic okay. and of course this is the next generation of dover athletic fans yes. as well because yeah. of course they get involved and they bring their parents along and you know and and, and, and it just attracts more supporters yes. to the club as well yeah yeah i think i think that is where we need to look at it, it's the younger generation we actually need to be targeting for, for everything it, it's the involvement that the club has in their lives not necessarily on a match day that will make them go actually <laughs> i enjoyed doing that maybe i'll go and watch them play and yeah hopefully that is something we are managing to do now finally i know mm. you don't get to watch a lot of the games because you're so busy <laughs> on a match day i feel sorry for you there but um but how have you found the start of the season? It's, it's positive, as we've just been speaking about, but uh, we're actually winning some games, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, it is, it is. It's positive. I mean, the atmosphere, the atmosphere is sort of compared to this time last year. I've, I've only been in the job 14 months. So, so this time last year, the, the, the atmosphere is so much better. Yes, we are winning the games. And actually, to a degree, that makes my job easier hmm. um, because people want to talk to you. People want to engage with you. People want to go, oh, I've had this idea. I know you might not be able to do it. Whereas... I think 12 months ago, it was, we should be doing this. You should be doing this. <laughs> and it's like, I can't do everything. Yeah, so, yeah, it is nice. It's nice at the time. And it's it's also nice. I was going back to, like, the, the match day experience for those children. Mm. I was doing that last year. And if you've got a dressing room of players who are, who are not as confident because the season's not going your way, trying to take a bunch of kids in to go and meet them, they don't want that. 
and then it, it doesn't make that experience as good. Whereas this this set of lads, because they have they've bonded so well, they're playing well together, they're working as a team. It is it is not it, that experience, that dressing room experience for those children is nice then because it is just one bit. It's, yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, I'm sure on behalf of all Dover Athletic fans, we thank you very much for the great work you're doing and uh, long may it continue. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs>